Thanks for being on today's podcast. My name is David from BeDadStrong.com. I'm super grateful that you're here, and I have a great conversation with a gentleman named Paul Beam. He is the founder of Man Camp out in Texas. He's been doing some amazing things out there, and he has such a crazy story and testimony about being abandoned as a young guy uh, two years old and what that caused in his journey as a man and how and why he has a heart to help men along their journey. Again, thanks for being here and enjoy the podcast. So here's the deal. Most dads today feel stuck, overwhelmed, like a shadow of the man they once were in their primes. And that's not okay. We're taking back the dad flag and creating a movement of men who will be strong, Strong leaders for their family, strong physically for their health, strong mentally for their careers, and strong internally for a balanced life. We are Dad Strong, and this podcast is for you. Cool. All right. We're live, Paul. How are you, man? I'm great. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. Been a little bit under the weather the last few days and running mm-hmm. around like crazy, but I'm, I'm here and Super, super happy to have you on this podcast. Yeah, man. It's an honor to be a part of it, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. So I, I really just wanted to, to start out. Um, I want people to hear your story. Like You have a, a pretty co- awesome story, and I'd love to yeah, have you share that with us. So talk to me a little bit about your background and, and what makes Paul Beam Paul Beam. Yeah, absolutely, man. <clears throat> so... Uh, I'm sure as with anyone else, what I'm learning as I continue along on this path and this journey, um, all of us have a story and uh, it starts uh, from the moment that we're born. And the reality of it is, from what I've learned, um, we all experience a a lot of the same things. And so it's not like my story is unique uh, or all that different from any other man's story, but (laughs) <laughs> With that being said, yeah, uh, I was raised by my mother um, until I was nine years old. My father actually abandoned me at the uh, at the age of two, well, me and my mother. And uh, <clears throat> so she raised me from ages two to nine. And then, of course, uh, she remarried when I was nine years old and in, into a pretty toxic relationship. Um, you know, there was uh, some different abuses and stuff that went on there and it just wasn't a good deal. Um, so anyway, uh, kind of as soon as I was able to move out of the house, I think I was 16 years old when I finally moved out and, uh, was kind of on my own, just living with friends here and there. And, um, so I decided to join the Marine Corps when I was 17, I guess, so I signed the papers on the, I was on the delayed entry program for uh, a year. And as soon as I graduated high school, ended up going into the Marine Corps, um, went to boot camp. When I came back from boot camp, I, I had a girlfriend that I had been with for a um, <clears throat> year and a half prior to that. And so we went ahead and, and got married. And she and I had our, our first child while I was in uh, the Marine Corps on active duty. We were actually stationed out in Cherry Point, North Carolina. Uh, so that's kind of where we started our life together. And over the course of the years, throughout our 10-year marriage, um, we, we, would, we had a total of three, three sons. Um, so I feel very blessed in, in that manner. But there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that uh, was pretty dark and just selfish on my part um a lot of infidelity um you know there was uh multiple affairs and such and i just wasn't the was not the husband and the father and the friend uh that i had told myself for years that i wanted to be to people um you know i think we can trace that back uh to to the you know what people call the father wound um but I, at the time, I didn't realize it. I didn't, I didn't learn anything about the father wound until, shoot, just the last few years, I guess. Um, so I, I just didn't know what was going on. Uh, I was just living living for myself. I didn't have anyone to guide me, to mentor me, to uh, teach me what it, it meant to be an honorable man, a uh, man of my word, a loyal man. And so I was just kind of living life. You know, I thought that the... the uh, 
I thought that being a good man or or getting my name out there was more about success, you know. So right. having a good career, making good money, um, having a nice home, having nice vehicles, um, going on vacations, you know. And I, I thought that that's what was going to make a name for myself. So I chased that for years. And uh, in addition to, to chasing that, you know, I was also – seeking uh approval and affirmation in all the wrong places whether it be friends whether it be women um you know i was seeking man's approval and uh it never was good enough for me never was Uh, there was always a void always a hole and i was just kind of aimlessly wandering about trying to figure out how to fill that void and how to live life to the fullest so it wasn't until I guess it wasn't until 2013 that uh, things really started to come together for me. I feel like certain men were placed in my life, uh, put around me. They were actually challenging me and um, calling me out on on some of the stuff, some of the ways I was acting. They actually cared enough about me to to, uh, point things out and to try and direct me in the right direction, you know, with a, a gentle push and a challenge, also at the same time with encouragement. So 2013 is really when things started to turn around for me and started to realize that that void I was trying to fill, number one, was was identity and, and purpose. I didn't have a purpose um, and I didn't have an identity. And then, I, you know, as I, I went through this course, it's called Biblical Manhood. And it really uh, opened my eyes to just the father wound and how that, you know, takes hold of us and has an impact in our lives and then. You know, part of the reason why I was being a selfish man and just kind of doing my own thing. Um, and then it, it taught me what it, what it meant to be uh, a son of the king and um, to not just live for myself, but to live for others, to love others, to offer grace uh, to others and to serve others. And so that kind of that started a whole new journey for me. Um <clears throat> In 2015, I I was finishing up my degree at Concordia University, and um, was just surrounded by some some awesome men. I was going to a, an amazing church. Uh, we were very Im- involved. We were leading small groups. Um, I was an, actually an intern in the the small groups ministry, and then I served part time on staff in the small groups ministry um, for a number of months. Well, I was finishing up my degree, and uh, in 2015, I, I, I just realized I, w- I was yearning. I had this desire to to be poured into by by other men who could, you know, really show me the, the correct path to live on instead of the path that I'd been living on. So, uh, one thing I'd realized is that our, our church, without fail, would host a women's retreat every year. Uh, but they, you know, each year they, they had failed to host a men's retreat. And then uh, also at the same time, uh, at Concordia University, uh, I was uh, in classes with these these young guys who were studying to go into ministry and they're facing all kinds of stresses and struggles and, and temptations. And so I said, well, I'm going to start looking for for men's retreats to take these guys to. And so. But I went to a couple men's retreats, but then we, uh, my wife and I were blessed with a piece of property out in Florence, Texas. It was just 12 acres, but I told God, I said, it's yours. Help us use it to honor you. And so that was one of my first ideas was to host a men's retreat out there. And that's kind of what we did. And we just, uh, <laughs> we just shot from the hip and named it. We just called it man <laughs> camp. Uh, and so we had, I think we probably had about 12 to 15 guys that night kind of come and go. Um, I cooked some barbecue for them. We sang some campfire praise and worship songs. We shared our testimonies, kind of encouraged each other, and, and we left that same night. Uh, but then in 2016, a, a year later, we, we decided to go ahead and host another one. I'd actually been put in a, a Bible study with a group of men. And uh, one morning I showed up and looked over where, where we normally meet and there was only one other guy that was there. And so we waited, you know, we we're like, well, 
we'll give him 10 or 15 minutes to see if anyone else shows up. And no one else showed up. It was just myself and, and this uh, guy named Jared Matthews. And um, so we just kind of made it a point to get to know each other better that day uh, because, uh, you know, we hadn't known each other for very long and just kind of got to talking. And um, I ended up inviting him into uh, helping me host this next event. He didn't know what he's getting into, of course. <laughs> so the next event, we, we, you know, pushing it together, we had about 35 men there. And we were like, we th- we th- I think we're on to something. And so we just continued to host it. And over the course of the, the events, you know, I think we went up to 50, and then we were up to 70. And then this last event, we had 80-plus men uh, at Man Camp. <clears throat> and we've since uh, moved from the 12-acre plot of property to a, a larger plot of property it's about 32 acres and, and that's what we do we host uh, two men's events a year we call it man camp and uh so in 2016 i formed a, a non-profit organization called true north ministries and uh man it's just been it's been a blessing it's been a struggle but that struggle has been such a blessing and i've learned so much and uh, I'm just thankful for what God's doing each and every day in my life. I feel like he's He's truly gotten a hold of my heart and, and taught me what it means to to live in my purpose. You know, he, he's given me an identity, um, you know, through his word and through the affirmations of other men. Um, I've learned who I am. I've learned what my purpose is. And uh, no matter how tough things get, I can't help but just continue to say, it's okay. T- tomorrow's another day. We're going to keep doing this. Um, whereas before, I, I felt like I-, I jumped around. You know, I was in the Marine Corps. I was in cells. I was a welder. I worked in the oil field. I worked for uh, <clears throat> a company called New Horizons that uh, housed children who had been pulled uh, from their families by CPS. You know, I-, I was all over the map, man, just trying to figure out what it was I was supposed to be doing. And the last few years, I, I really, truly believe I've found it. I mean, my heart's been set, and uh, it's been a journey. Uh, it's been enjoyable. It's been fulfilling, and I continue to, or yeah, my, my plan is to continue to to push f- further along on this path and continue to challenge men and encourage men and equip men uh, because I believe that's what I needed, and I believe there are a lot of men out there who they're in the same boat. They need other men uh, around them. Who can speak to their lives, who, who will challenge, encourage, and equip them uh, <clears throat> to, to truly step into their purpose and to live out their purpose. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, can you go back a little bit to when you were nine years old and your father just walked out on you and your uh, mom? And, you know, what did that do in terms of like your own? Uh, emotional state like did it make you angry as you grew into your teenhood because I I, I, the question I'm trying to get at here is is there's a a lot of dads right now who have younger kids um, maybe around that same age and and kids going into their teen years without a present father one who maybe even there but just is completely emotionally checked out or has got other things on their mind rather than being present with their kids like what kind of side effect did that have on you and, and looking back and who you were and who, whatever, who you developed into from those years of, you know, nine to 17 without your real dad in the picture. Um, like talk to me a little bit about what that did to you. Yeah. So great question. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, my father abandoned us when I was two years old. Okay. Well, I didn't even remember him, uh, really. And so I think just, just thinking back on that time, uh, so, so we can break it down. We can say at two years old, from two years old to nine years old, I didn't have a father at all. I believe what that did was it, it left me seeking approval, right, from, from all the wrong places. Because we talk about the father wound and, and what that means and what the father, the father God does for us. He, he gives us our identity. He marks us with his stamp of approval and um, in his love and his affirmations. And he holds us accountable and teaches us what, uh, what it is to, to, uh, to be a real man and to, to live with honor and integrity and love. And so 
not saying that a mother cannot do that, but a mother, uh, my mother was very loving. She was very kind. Um, but I believe, I truly believe there's just a certain, uh, there's a certain thing that fathers are able to do in, in their children's lives that mothers cannot. I truly believe it's a 50, 50 balance. Um, there's certain traits and qualities, uh, that a, a female possesses, um, that fit perfectly into molding a child. And then the other 50% though, is the father. There's certain traits and qualities that a man possesses, um, that they are able to pour into children as well. And it's a, it's 50, 50. If you don't have both of those, um, I, I'm not saying that a mother can't do it alone or a father can't do it alone, but I am saying the two doing it together. Um, there, there's just, there's more power in that for any child. It doesn't matter whether it's male or female, but I certainly believe that a father must be present in a son's life, uh, to help them explore that, you know, that, that warrior side, that adventure side, and then, uh, to teach them to be a gentleman and, uh, what it means to, to honor women and respect them. So, uh, I still wrestle with that all the time. You know, when I think about how I was, um, you know, I was very, um, you know, I was not loyal and, and there were multiple affairs. And so I feel like I was constantly searching for, uh, for something, some sort of fulfillment that I believe had, had I had a father there to truly just sit me down and talk to me every now and then, or even to be there to throw the football with me. Right. Like just right. that, that, that masculine side to wrestle, to throw a football, to, to, to play some baseball, to take me hunting, to teach me how to lift weights or something. There, there would have been a more productive outlet for me other than searching for women and seeking that fulfillment in, in an area that I had no business seeking it. So let's go on to, to nine years old when my mother met my stepfather. That was just, uh, that was a time when I believe my self confidence, um, just totally went away because it was such an abusive situation. I, I was scared to death of the man just because, you know, he would get to drinking and, and uh, he'd be pretty aggressive. Uh, and I believe at that point is, is when my mother and myself both lost a piece of ourselves. Mm. Um, and for me, it was confidence and, and assurance uh, of knowing that, that number one, uh, I was safe and secure, but number two, I, I, as a young man, had what it took uh, to succeed in life and, and to to be that man of honor and uh, so on and so forth. And so, uh, a father not being present, I believe, has has many effects. Uh, just looking at my life, uh, insecurities aimlessly wandering about trying to figure out who we are and what we're doing in, in the world, uh, trying to figure out what our purpose is. Um, it, but then even the, the fathers who, who are there and just not present or they're abusive um, or maybe they're a little, you know, in their approach to their children, they're a little too disciplinary or, you know, they're not offering enough love and affection and grace uh, along with that, you know, the sternness that, that you've got to balance. Um, I believe it can, it can affect a child's confidence without a doubt and um, leave them searching for that confidence, which is a very, very difficult piece to, uh, to finally find and nail down. I believe to this day, I'm still, um, there's still parts of me that from time to time I, I can seek in or sink into that, to a level of, of insecurity and I'm left trying to, you know, pick up my confidence. <clears throat> right. It's, it's interesting. You mentioned the, the in well, the direct effect of your father leaving at two years old. And then you were just saying you struggle with infidelity and, and like a wandering heart in a lot of ways. And I mean, your dad walks out and essentially you're left with that same kind of an inheritance. If, if for lack of a better term of this is who I am that I don't stay in one place, that I don't stay in one relationship. I'm unfaithful because your father was the same, right? He, so what we do as dads, 
what whatever we're sowing, like if you think of it in terms of farming, whatever type of seed that we're putting in the soil, and if you know our seeds are our actions and our intentions and motivations that we that we do as a man and our kids are like the soil, whatever seeds that we're sowing, they will bear fruit, whether good or bad, they will bear fruit. And, you know, if we walk in anger and and disapproval and disappointment, um, if our kids are annoying to us, um, and they know that stuff, right? They sense that stuff. Kids are really, really smart and they're really intuitive. And even if you're not saying it, they feel it. Yeah. and I don't want to set an expectation that it's like it's impossible to be a dad because there are things that you just don't know that you're doing. And that's why it's so important to be around other dads and to be to put dads in front of you and, and other men in front of you that you can live up to and you can look up to and say, I want to grow up into that no matter how old you are. Right. Like it's so important to have mentors around you. And I, I think that's really a big impetus to this whole podcast with dad strong is like, how do we put the voice of other fathers around us that maybe in a a little bit, not necessarily miles ahead of us, but maybe just one step further in their journey. I can say, you know what? I walked down this, I fell into this trap. Don't do this. And I'm hoping and praying that anybody listening to this is going to say, you know what, man, I have been like extra harsh with my kids and I don't even know why. You know, and sometimes we get so stressed out with work and all the other stuff that's going on in our life that our kids just bear the brunt of frustration and anxiety and and all that stuff. But, you know, going back to your story, what your father did, that huge action of walking out and leaving you guys, it left you to to repeat the same things. And you didn't even know that you were doing it necessarily. It was just this is now my default because it was sewn into me. And it, it takes like a, a bit of reprogramming or just waking up and saying, I, I don't want this anymore. This is not who I really am as a man. This is not what it really looks like to be a man. And you don't even know what it looks like to be a man unless you see it in somebody else. Right. So like it, how important is it to have mentors around you? I know you bring in some really amazing men um, into these man camp settings as mentors to these other guys um, how important is that to you to have men of a certain caliber that other guys can can look up to in these camps? Yeah, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, you know, uh, it's it's absolutely essential. We it doesn't matter, like you said, it doesn't matter where we're at in our journey. When we finally realize um, that we're here for more than just ourselves and that it's our duty uh, to serve others at that point in time, in that moment is when we are automatically responsible um, to pick up the torch and to carry it. It doesn't matter where we are at in our walk. And this is something that took me a long time to realize because I used to tell myself, I'm not ready. Uh, I'm not where I need to be. Um, I don't, I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have enough wisdom. I don't, I don't have a specialty. I don't have a profession. Um, I don't, I don't have anything to offer yet. Uh, the reality was though, I did, uh, my, my story, my life story in and of itself is, is enough and has made me the, the man that I am today. And so I, I would say for, for those out there who keep telling themselves, uh, not yet, it's not my time. Well, you're wrong. It is your time. Um, because like you were saying just a minute ago, it doesn't matter if we're even half a step ahead of someone in our journey. That half a step has the potential to impact someone's life uh, for, for, for the greater good uh, and for many generations. And so um, you'd also mentioned something else in regard to planting seeds that I wanted to kind of uh, go back to real quick is, you know, like when my father walked out, like you would think that him walking out um well that's just one seed that's planted um right that that uh right. just um yeah i can quit i can walk away i don't have to stay in one place but the reality is um we are we are intentionally or unintentionally planting seeds well one way or another we're planting seeds and if we are unintentional about the seeds we plant 
um, those seeds are going to be they're, they're going to be detrimental, uh, and they're going to they're going to reap a harvest uh, that is not a good harvest. And so we have to be intentional about the seeds that we're sowing. Um, yeah. If we intend to uh, to leave a legacy for our children and for our grandchildren, um, we have to be intentional about it. And so it's not even about um, making mistakes as fathers, we're going to make mistakes. That's the bottom line. We're, we're never going to be perfect. Um, but if we're intentional and uh, we have the right foundation and we're, we're surrounding ourselves with other men who can uh, speak wisdom into us uh, and challenge us and encourage us and help us to brainstorm, um, that is intentionality. And that's what's going to help us get better. Um, as fathers and that's what's going to help us sow those good seeds and uh, so even for those who who feel like well I go to work and I do I'm a provider you know well if if you're not spending time with your children intentional time if you're not getting to know them if you're not um, if you're not listening to them listening to their their victories their pains whatever it is you are sowing seeds um, even if you're a provider and you give them a hug and a kiss every night and that's it, there's still a seed being sown if you're not being intentional with the time that you spend with your children. Um, <clears throat> so something you said a minute ago kind of brought that up in my mind, and I just felt like I needed to say that. No, that's good. Um, I'm just reminded as you say that, like how powerful of a seed it is to sow into um, your son or your daughter uh, the, the seed of forgiveness and showing them and modeling what it looks like to say, you know what, I'm, I messed up. Daddy got upset at you and he shouldn't have. And I overreacted and will you forgive me? Or, you know, I, I shut you down when you were talking and I shouldn't have interrupted you and made you feel like you didn't matter. Your opinion didn't matter or whatever. Just the, even the act of being a dad who apologizes to his son will, I think it will shortcut a huge amount of heartache and, and pride and arrogance that, that we're seeing in a, in a generation right now where nothing's anybody's fault. Nobody takes blame for anything because everybody's a victim in some way. Um, I, I think that was sown into kids by their fathers that, they got away with murder, did whatever they want, and hey, it's not my fault. Um, but just just that act, that simple act of saying, you know what, I messed up, I'm sorry. Even doing that with your wife in front of your kids, honey, I'm sorry. Like, just, <laughs> it's so huge uh, as a man to be able to show, like, I'm not perfect all the time, I'm not bulletproof, um, but there's grace to say, you know, I'm sorry. And let's get our relationship back on track. Cause I, you know, as I grew up, there was a lot of father and mother wounds and things that happened where they came, they stemmed from that, where it was somebody didn't want to admit that they were, they were wrong. And it just made me feel like I don't matter. You know, what, what my opinion is or the way I think, or my ideas don't matter. And, you know, that, that obviously affected me down into my life, but how much of an amazing impact can we make on our kids by just even saying those simple words, I'm sorry, I messed up. And kids are so quick to forgive. It's incredible. Like, I just want to ask, like, what are you afraid of as a dad? What are you afraid of to say, I'm sorry, that you don't look perfect anymore? Well, newsflash, they already know you're not perfect. Yeah. Right. I mean, how, how much would that have meant to you if your dad came back in the picture? I don't know if he did or not, but you know, at 15 years old and said, Paul, I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I honestly can't tell you what it would have meant. Uh, I can tell you what I think it would have meant. I think if he were uh, sincere about it and his actions backed it up, um, I think it would have meant the world to me. What kind of healing would that have done? I don't know because it's never happened. Uh, right. You know, so until it actually happens, uh, I don't know that I could tell you what kind of healing uh, that would provide for me. Um, but I could only imagine 
um, that it would only be good. I mean, it could only produce good to, to be able to have that, um, you know, that apology and that reconciliation of sorts, you know, and I think at the same time, you know, like I know I would be willing to accept that and I know that it would make me feel good. Um, and so that, that brought something to mind just a minute ago when you're kind of talking, uh, you know, there, there may be some men out there that they feel like it's, it's too much, too much to bear. They're, they're, they messed up too many times. Um, you know, their relationship with their children or their spouse is too far gone. Um, you know, they're on the verge of giving up. And I would, I would say to those men, um, it's not too late. You know, I've got three sons that live with their mother and it's a struggle every day, all the time. You know, I think about it and, um, we're, we're making progress, but we, we've had a very strained relationship. Um, my boys range from age 10 to, uh, 17 and we, we've, you know, I've experienced all kinds of, of stresses and just distance and, you know, trying to salvage relationships and, and talk to them and give them those apologies and give them love and let them know I'm proud of them, um, that I'm here for them. Uh, but at times it does get tough and it does feel overwhelming and it feels like, a like I may not gain any ground some days, but that, that's, you know, kind of going back, you, you had asked about the importance of having, uh, men to help lead other, you know, lead groups, uh, at our events. Well, that's why it's so important for us as men to enlist other men into our lives, um, to enlist men who are, are willing to, to walk alongside us on the battlefield and, and be our brother and, and help us to, uh, think through things and, and to fight through things quite honestly. Cause at, at times, you know, uh, there, there's times that I absolutely can't do it alone. Uh, I've got to have these other men in my life who are willing to kind of, you know, either give me a pep talk or, or kick me in the rear a little bit and say, Hey Paul, like, listen to yourself, you know? So ha- having other men in our lives, um, it, it's, it's crucial. We, we cannot do this alone. Uh, I'm sorry. Some people feel like they can, they feel like they're an island that's dangerous territory. And, uh, so to create a brotherhood, to have a brotherhood, to have men around you who can speak into your life, to have men around you that you're able to speak into, it's, um, it is essential. And those are, those are the relationships that when you're in the trenches and you're going through hell and everything has hit the fan and you're just losing it and you don't even know where to turn or sometimes you can't even, you don't even have words to say it just those guys that stand with you and sit on the phone with you during that silence. And they're just there. Those are the relationships that last like forever. The ones who you, you share a foxhole together, you both have gone through hell. And that's, I I think that's so, like you said, it's so essential to have. It's not, you're not weak as a man. If you have to ask for help, you know, I, I was just learning that. This week I was at a, an event with a guy named Todd White and just talking through like it's okay to ask for help. He asks for help every single day. And that's actually a, a, a part of strength is to say I can't do this alone. I can do it so much better with a partner. I can do it so much better with a, another man who's better than me. Like I mean I even think of, of walking through the hardware store. Like if you're not super handy, I have some friends who are amazing. They could take a felled tree and, and, you know, create a chair out of it or a footstool or whatever, um, without asking for any help. Now I go in and I'm like, I I don't even know what size drill bit I need for X, Y, Z can, and and having to ask for help can be so humiliating in a hardware store, (laughs) but that's what they're there for, right. To have somebody to walk you through it. And just that, that point of humiliation, if you get over it, like, you know what, it doesn't matter what they think of me, like stop being so self-conscious as a guy. And I think that's, that's something that you touched on is, you know, from being younger and, and going through the stuff that you'd gone through, how self-aware you were and self-conscious of a lot of things. And, and I, I, I just want to submit, like, I think the impact we have of a father who can be really critical or maybe not even having a father is you just don't know what to do and you don't have direction 
or you have a father who's maybe super critical of everything that you're doing. And so you start second guessing everything. And I think that just really castrates masculinity in a lot of ways. Um, For sure. I don't know. When, when you're at man camp and you have guys who might be shooting a firearm for the first time, are there any that come to mind for you that you can tell they've never held a firearm, they've never been around it, and you just see that look on them of they, they don't necessarily want to say that they need help, but they really have no clue what they're doing and, and having somebody step in? Do you, it, has that ever happened? Absolutely. Happens every time. We've always There's always someone out there who is a first-timer. Um, and so it's, it's very cool to be able to take that moment to coach them, um, with, with humility, uh, you know, because a lot of guys who are, who are, from my experience, a lot of guys who are proficient with firearms, um, they, a lot of men can actually, uh, they're, they're a little cocky or arrogant, you know, but to yeah. stand out there and coach a man that has never fired one before and then see like the. I don't know, just the joy that comes from, you know, they don't feel, they don't feel judged. Um, and they don't, they don't feel like they have to be nervous. Um, but man, by the time it's all said and done, they're sending rounds down range and it's the first time they've ever fired a, a firearm. And, you know, it's just like a whole new experience for these men. And, and to see, the joy that comes from that or just like, oh, man, you know, these guys are talking about, you know, I need to get me a pistol or a rifle and get into this. And um, it's just kind of cool, man, because, you know, there again, I never had anyone do that for me uh, mm-hmm. until I was in the Marine Corps. And then it was like, uh, I mean, you can only imagine what that's like when they're trying to teach you that <laughs> the firearm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just like I never, ever had that. And. I wish I had. And so if I can provide that experience for another man that's never experienced it, man, that to me, that's just a joy because I realize that I'm doing something for them that someone never did for me. And, and when you're coaching a man who's never held a firearm before, there's, there's literally no judgment from a person who's maybe shot, you know, 200 to 300,000 rounds in their life you know, from multiple weapons and they're very comfortable around them and hunting their whole life. And then you have a person who's never held one before. They don't know the action from the trigger. They don't, they don't know anything of, about the gun. Um, there's absolutely no judgment from the man instructing because the other man has had no experience. And I think that can correlate so much with a father son relationship of as dads, our kids are, are walking into brand new territory every single day, territory that you've been in. And if we can take that kind of mindset of, of even being a firearms instructor with a, a brand new person, take that as, as a father to a son, like to just try not to have any judgment for them, whether they're failing or not, at least they're out there trying like that. I think that could just, if we could just take the pressure off of our kids this performance pressure, of that you have to do it right the first time and, and you're going to embarrass me if you don't do it right. I mean, if you're instructing somebody with a firearm, you're not going to be embarrassed if the guy does something wrong, right? It's not about you. It's about that man coming into this transform. It's, it's like a transformational experience when you see them go from, I don't even know how to grip this thing to, I just hit the target. There's this light bulb goes off of like, I succeeded. Imagine that with your own kids your own son trying basketball or shooting or whatever it is that you're teaching him that transformation process of, Hey man, no pressure. I'm here to help you. No matter what happens, I'm here to stand with you. And if, if that mindset, if that type of a a strong male presence was with us our whole life, like I think this world would be completely flipped upside down. I mean, I just read an article. It was like 26 out of the last 27 mass shootings. The, the, the perpetrators were fatherless yeah. and like that, that's shocking. I, it, but it's at the same time, it's not surprising mm-hmm. just how impactful it is 
to have a father in, in the picture. And then, like I said, if, if there's no pressure put on, if there's no expectation of like, you're going to embarrass me if you do this wrong or, or whatever, you're going to disappoint me in some way. Like I, I can't even imagine what that would do for men across the country. If they, if they had something like that in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I love what you're doing with man camp. I think it's a, it's so needed. And like we've talked about, it's, it's really hard for men to ask for help sometimes. So it's not like there's this huge outcry of men saying, I wish there was X. I wish we had something like this, but until we create it and then show a group of men, this is out there and this can be beneficial for you. Um, so I, I, I just want to applaud you for seeing a need, even though you doubted yourself of like, can I really do this? Am I really equipped? Am I the right guy? I'm sure there's, you know, a thousand other guys more qualified than myself. Yeah. But you took action and you say, you know what? I'm the one who has the idea right now. And I have the means to do this with the property. Why not just take the first step and and who cares what happens next? And like, that's, that's so big. That's such a great lesson for a lot of guys who are doubting themselves to take a next step that they know is in front of them right now. Um, whether it's walking back into their kid's life and they've been gone for 15 years or um, coming back to a relationship that, that they had failed. Um, I just, I, I think you're leading a great example, Paul, in the things that you're doing and the men that you're raising up right now. Um, so thank you for creating man camp and being a part of this journey of, I think it's a journey of restoring masculinity to men. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, men who don't want to ask for help, you know? So I just think it's super awesome what you're doing. Thanks brother. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, same, same with you, man. I appreciate what you're doing with uh, dad strong <clears throat> and, uh, it's been really cool getting to, getting to know you and, and, and kind of being a part of the Facebook group and uh learning more about these guys and and seeing what they're going through Uh, it's really cool to be able to create these communities where men can can go for support you know and it's a safe space for them to get in there and and ask some questions or give some advice and uh so i I really i really like what we have going um I, i think you know uh i think you're you've kind of honed in you're focusing more on on fatherhood and fathers and uh that's awesome <clears throat> of course we're uh i think you know going into this i've i've just kind of hit men in general just because i feel like uh all my life I, i've been kind of just wandering around and um so even as a man i've struggled very often with with things and it's taken a long time for me to get to the point where i am today um, but absolutely it took other men to, to help get me where I am. And so I think it's a, it's a really good thing we're doing together. And I'm glad that we can, uh, you know, join forces and, and keep fighting the good fight together and, and helping each other out and everything that we're doing. That's absolutely. So if, if there's any men who either want to be a part of, man camp in like a a volunteer capacity or men who want to go attend it or send, uh, send somebody to it. How could they do that? Yeah. So, uh, if men would like to attend, uh, a man camp event, they can go to www.true-north-ministries.com. That's our current uh, website. And, uh, they can click on the man camp tab and then click on man camp spring 2019 and that okay. will that will take you to the button uh to the link to where you can register it'll give you more information about man camp and uh now we we don't have it uh it's not detailed but basically man camp is an event that we host uh to challenge encourage and equi- equip men to be better men Um, and the, the whole point is to get a group of men together who, uh, can meet and get to know other men, uh, you know, join a community of men who are on the same path and wanting to grow as men and be better men. 
and make an impact in the world. And so we, we strive to bring those men together. We take them through a process over the course of the weekend. Uh, we have a speaker series. We have small group breakouts. And then, of course, for the adventure and that warrior side of man that, you know, that that beastly side that just wants to uh, escape us from time to time, we we host competitions. And so all the teams compete against each other. Some some of the competitions are are physical. Um, some of them are not so physical. Obviously, we do three gun competition and long range shooting. Uh, there's some other stuff we throw in there. So we try to hit all this, all the stuff that, uh, we feel are important for, for men, you know, the, the mental, the emotional, the physical and the spiritual aspect. Uh, we want to challenge, encourage and equip men in all of those areas. Um, and then of course we have our Facebook uh, page, True North Ministries, uh, that the folks could go follow. Uh, we have not created our, our private group just yet but we intend to do that here in the very near future near future um and then we also have uh, we are on instagram as well okay through north ministries uh, on instagram as well you can follow us there we're trying to be a lot more active um <clears throat> it's, it's taking some time but we're we're definitely being more active and and trying to throw good content out there for folks that's awesome it's a it's definitely a full-time job to continue to put good content out there and and keep you know keep the new stuff coming and uh managing these social media platforms is isn't it's pretty intense actually yeah it certainly so is I, uh, for a guy like me who doesn't know much about them <laughs> yeah but, yeah as far as guys being more involved and maybe stepping up into a leadership role at some point one thing we do like uh I'm not saying that it has to happen all the time, but kind of the the course that we've taken so far is most of our current leaders are leaders who have attended one of our events and have actually experienced it and know what to expect. Yeah, and, that makes sense. Uh, who, who actually have skin in the game, you know, because it's hard. It's easy for a man to say, I want to lead, but it's, um, it's, you know, when you know what you're, Want what you're wanting to lead exactly uh that's what makes a difference and so if men come out and they participate it gives them a better idea of what's going on and then they can kind of come to us and say hey we well, you know what I, I believe god has gifted me in this area and i i'd like to use it um and be you know kind of help lead some of these or, or be a part of the you know be a, play a bigger role um but yeah we, we like guys to kind of participate first and experience it at least once yeah, that makes total sense. Total sense. Well, perfect. Um, so you heard Paul. If you want to go check out more about Man Camp and want to go attend, it's in Texas. And you can go to true-north-ministries.com and you can find Man Camp in there. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. Um, well, thank you again, Paul, for being on this. And thank you for your time and, and all of what your heart and your passion is and, and that you're putting it into practice right now. Um, you're, you're being an awesome example for us other guys. So thank you for, for everything that you're doing, man. Yeah, brother. Thanks for having me on. And, uh, um, shoot, look forward to talking to you here in the near future and even, uh, getting to know some of the guys in your group a little more. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I am so grateful you got to hear what we just went through. And if you love what you just heard, come join us over at BeDadStrong.com and grab yourself some swag, grab a hat, a shirt, sport the brand that is helping dads be strong for their families, changing the world one household at a time. Thanks again for listening and hope to see you over at BeDadStrong.com.